a lot of you have some pretty strong opinions about Amberlynn Reed, but in this video, we're gonna ask, is Amberlynn Reed a lost cause? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I'm making a ton of videos. And oh my Lord, like, <laughs> So I made a video last week, like I, like I mentioned in my video last week, with one of the most highly requested YouTubers, I've been asked to make a video about is Amberlynn Reed. So I made a video and oh boy, like first off, thank you, thank all of you. Thank you for providing me with some insight and everything like that. Um, but I do wanna address some of the comments real quick. Like some people were like, you need to do research, you need to do research. And it's like, I know, like I plan on it, but they, a lot of people missed the mark of that video. Like I explained it pretty well that the video wasn't necessarily about Amberlynn Reed. I want to know your motives or what you think my motives are but behind making a video. So like, just so you all know, I'm in the middle of writing like uh, uh, an anger management book. I'm thinking about titling it Rewire Your Anger and then that way I can make a series like Rewire Your Anxiety. That, but anyways, let me know if you like that idea. But like, yo, if Amberlynn Reed is ruining your day, like, Make sure you pick up a copy of my book when I'm done with it, <laughs> all right? But but yeah, like, just basically what I talked about in that video was, like, what, like, do you want me to just make a video so there's another voice on YouTube saying that Amberlynn Reed is, like, an awful person? Like, is that what you want? Because that's not what I do. So, in this video, I want to talk about, is Amberlynn Reed a lost cause? So, you, again, thank you. You provided me with a lot of insight. I did go down some Amberlynn Reed rabbit holes. Uh, there was another guy... Uh, who did a reaction of my video <laughs> and saying that, you know, how I was confused about her and stuff. And, um, and yeah, you guys give me some insight. I learned a lot more. I learned about the allegations. I learned about, you know, the lies. I learned about, you know, um, her weight loss, quote unquote, stuff and her continuing to do mukbangs. And I learned all that stuff. So I might make more videos on it addressing different things. But in this first video... I want to talk about something that came up in the comments quite a bit, which is Amberlynn Reed is a lost cause. Amberlynn Reed is too far gone. Amberlynn Reed is just a lost cause. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, do I think Amberlynn Reed is a lost cause? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And right now, you might have hit that unsubscribe button. You might have unliked the video. But sorry, everybody. If you've been around since my series on Jake Paul, um or Jake Paul and Shane Dawson, you know you know my stance on things. I'm extremely empathetic. I know that there are a lot of reasons for why people are the way they are, but there's a difference between a reason and an excuse. So what I'm saying is, there is no excuse for Amberlynn Reed's behavior, all right? But there's a reason behind it. And what where this comes from is, you guys gotta understand, like you're talking to somebody who is not a perfect human being by any stretch of the imagination. For a decade of my life, I was a drug addict and an alcoholic. I was an awful, awful person for a decade of my life. Now, I will let you know this, like the things that Amberlynn Reed has done, those are not necessarily things I have done, but you gotta understand, I have lied, cheated, stolen. I have broke my family's hearts over and over and over again. I didn't see my son for four months and part of my brain didn't even realize that that was a problem, right? I, I, I let down so many people in my life. I was a scumbag. I was a piece of garbage, okay? And I am a com the complete opposite today. I've been cleaning sober for six years. I have worked extremely hard on myself to become a new person. So, I never think anybody's too far gone, and this is an important topic. This is an important topic to talk about, okay? Because there are people in your life right now who you think are too far gone. You think this person is a lost cause. And man, I, I often say that the only, the only reason I'm around today is because of one word, and that word is hope, okay? Hope is something I didn't have my entire life. 
My entire life, I didn't have hope. And something happened six and a half years ago where I just had this little sliver, this little, little sliver of hope. And I want you to have this hope too, that maybe, just maybe, your life doesn't need to be the way that it is any longer, right? Like, that doesn't mean it's going to change tomorrow, but we need to believe in that in other people too. We need to believe that other people can change. I'm not saying forgive everybody right away. I'm not saying that, you know, we should forgive every, you know, convicted uh, felon who's done like violent offenses. I'm not saying any of that. But based on science and neuroplasticity, I believe that people can change. Now, when it comes to someone like Amberlynn Reed, or if it comes to your friend, your family member, like the drug addict or alcoholic in your life, the, whoever it is, can they change? I think they can. But the trick is, the trick, here's the tricky thing. Are they willing to change? All right? Because this whole thing, this whole thing, it's all about willingness. Are you willing to change? Are you willing to put in the work? Okay, something that people ask me all the time is how many people do you think are gonna relapse? Like when I was working in drug and alcohol rehab center, how many people do you think are gonna relapse? My honest answer, 90%. And people are like, oh my God, Chris, oh my God, how can you say that? That's terrible. No, it's just me being a realist because I know most people are stubborn. They're not gonna do the things that we tell them to do, right? So like, that's what I want you to look at with yourself. Like, I always say at the beginning of every video, we talk about the problem and focus on, but focus on the solution. And like some of you watching this right now, you're staying in the problem. All you need, all you need is a sliver of willingness to change. Oh, that's all you need, just a little bit of willingness, just a tiny bit of willingness to get you to do something proactive, right? To do something productive, to do something that improves your mental health. And then you gotta figure out a way to keep that as a routine and keep that going. Slowly but surely, things will get better. Like, y'all, like, please don't get it twisted. One of the reasons I'm writing this anger management book first is because even like the first two years, maybe longer, like after I got sober, I was still a raging hot mess. I was still lying, I was still screaming at people, like I was still a terrible person. The only difference was that I wasn't drinking or using drugs. That was the only difference. But through growing, through this process of all these different mental health aspects that I try to teach you, I became a better person bit by bit by bit. So. I, the two things I want you to take away from this video is one, I do not think that you are a lost cause. If you're watching this video, I don't think you're hopeless. I don't think you're a lost cause. I have seen people at the bottom of the barrel turn their lives around. The, if you had seen, if you could even see half of the success stories that I've seen, you'd understand where I'm coming from, right? So the first thing is, I don't think you're hopeless. The second thing is, I don't think anybody in your life is hopeless either, all right? I think a lot of people, it takes a moment of clarity, it might take an intervention, it might take something for them to do it. But that's why I make a lot of videos about enabling. So you can help get that person that little, uh, that little nudge into the willingness direction. All right, but anyways, keep this video a little bit shorter than usual, under 10 minutes. So let's talk. Do you, what are your thoughts? Do you ever feel hopeless, right? If you do, what are you gonna do about it? Here's my tip, by the way. Find people to inspire you. Find people who had a really rough life. Find people who are doing better now and look up to them and see what they did and model yourself after them, all right? That's all I got for you with this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think I'm a moron, feel free to give it a thumbs down. But sorry, I'm just an optimist, baby, and I ain't changing, <laughs> all right? But that's all I got. Um, a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all awesome. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell. I make a ton of videos. I will keep you updated on my anger management book as well. If you have any um, anger management things that you need to work on, leave them down in the comments. And uh, I'm in the process of writing it, so I will add things as I go. All right, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.